Hi, if you've already watched one of my other core practical videos, I'm really glad you found it useful enough to click play on this one. But you can skip the first minute, so scroll along. If you haven't zoomed forward, welcome to this core practical video. It's part of a series of videos which I'm hoping will help you to focus on each of the Edexcel Physics GCSE core practicals. For double science students, you only need seven out of the eight, so please skip number four, thermal energy. This is only for the triple scientists. Triples, you need all eight. Assessment of practical work is included as part of the final exams. A minimum of 15% of the total marks must be allocated to questions related to these core practicals. So, I hope you find the video useful and I hope it helps you to revise the experiment that you will have done in your lessons. In the first core practical, you are investigating the relationship between force mass and acceleration by varying the masses added to trolleys. Edexcel's description is that different masses must be used to investigate the effect of varying masses on the acceleration of a trolley down a ramp. Appropriate methods must be used to measure the force and the time taken for the trolley to travel down the ramp and data analysis must include calculating the acceleration. Here is the experiment set up. I have a ramp and a trolley. The trolley has a string tied to it which you can see runs over a pulley at the end. I have light gates set up in two places along the ramp. I'm using one to measure the velocity of the trolley through the first gate and one to measure the velocity of the trolley through the second gate and then a pair of light gates to measure the time the trolley takes to travel between the first and second light gate positions. For safety I'm using crumpled newspaper for the falling mass to land on. I'll be keeping my toes out of the way and ensuring that the trolley does not fly off the end of the ramp and hit me. The resultant force to move the trolley will come from this falling mass. The 100 grams or 0.1 kilogram mass has gravity pulling 10 newtons per kilogram on it, so it provides a pulling force, a resultant force, of 1 newton on the trolley. To compensate for friction, you can see I needed to raise the ramp just enough for the trolley to start to move on its own. So we're using gravity pulling the trolley down the slope to balance the frictional forces from the wheels. That means the resultant force is the one newton that I've set on the hanger. And this will not be changed throughout the experiment. A couple of other measurements I'll also need include the length of the card that I'm using to block the light from the light gates. This allows the data logger to calculate the velocity at each light gate because it times how long the light is blocked for and then uses speed is distance divided by time to work out the speed at each light gate. I also need to know the mass of the trolley with that card in place. So you can see it's 781 grams or 0.781 kilograms. To recap, I'm keeping the force fixed at one newton. I'll be changing the mass of the trolley and measuring the acceleration. The acceleration of the trolley can be calculated using the readings for U, the initial velocity through the first light gate, B, the final velocity through the second light gate, and T, the time between the two light gates. For the first reading, there's no extra mass at all. It's just the mass of the trolley. Now using a little bit of white tack to secure it, I'm adding 100 grams to the 781 grams of the trolley. So the total mass is now 881 grams or 0.881 kilograms. And I repeat the experiment again. Then increase the mass again by another 100 grams to 0.981 kilograms. 
and so on for a range of different masses. And then for each different mass, the acceleration of the trolley can be calculated using all of the readings from the data loggers. A graph can be plotted to look at the pattern of results between the acceleration and the mass for the fixed resultant force. It would look like this. As the mass increases, the acceleration decreases. Remember, the resultant force was fixed. I fixed it at 1 newton. As the mass increases, the acceleration decreases for a fixed mass. Mass and acceleration are inversely proportional. So perhaps there'd be a better graph to draw. By finding one over the mass and then plotting a graph of acceleration against one over mass, we can see clearly that mass and acceleration are inversely proportional because we can see a straight lined graph going through zero, zero. Here, that constant gradient is the force. In my experiment, the gradient would be worth one newton. And that's the first core practical. I hope you found the revision video useful. Remember that. Regular, Regular review gets a better grade for, for you. you. Don't forget to like so that I can keep making the videos. Comment especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe. So you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs>